Okay, so let's uh, talk about the control of blood pressure. And this is a follow-up to our previous uh, discussion. And we're going to talk first about the control of cardiac action or cardiac output as we described it in our last video. So let's start with the contribution of the sympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system sends a signal to the SA node and the AV node in the heart. So here's a nerve input to the SA node and the AV node. And an increase in the sympathetic nervous system signal to the SA node and the AV node leads to an increase in the heart rate. And we know that the heart rate times the stroke volume gives us the cardiac output. And we know that an increase in the cardiac output leads to an increase in the blood pressure. So increasing the sympathetic nervous system signal to the heart increases the heart rate, which increases the cardiac output which then increases the blood pressure. So this leads to an increase in the blood pressure. Now, the sympathetic nervous system also, though, sends signals to the heart muscle, and an increase in the sympathetic nervous system signal to the heart muscle increases the amount of force that the heart generates when it contracts. So it increases the force of contraction that pushes more blood out with every contraction, so that increases the stroke volume, and increasing the stroke volume also increases the blood pressure. Now, the sympathetic nervous system can be thought of uh, like the gas in your car. So this is, this is like the gas pedal in your car and if you push down on the gas pedal in your car, you go faster. But if you take your foot off the gas pedal, uh, you will slow down. And a decrease in the sympathetic nervous system signal to the heart will decrease the heart rate and decrease the stroke volume, and that would lead to a decrease in blood pressure. And it turns out that there's always a signal going to the heart from the sympathetic nervous system, and it's called the sympathetic nervous system tone. And what that means is if you have a constant signal to the heart, then you can actually speed the heart up or slow it down by using the sympathetic nervous system. Not so hard to understand. Think if you're driving on the highway and you want to go faster, you put more gas on. If you want to slow down, you could just take your foot off the gas and that would slow the car down. That's the sympathetic nervous system. Now, let's look at the parasympathetic nervous system signal to the heart. The parasympathetic nervous system signal to the heart. And you can think of the parasympathetic nervous system signal to the heart as though it were the uh, brakes to the car. So that's like the brakes. There's your brake pedal. And the parasympathetic nervous system sends a branch to the SA node and a branch to the AV node, increasing the parasympathetic nervous system signal to the heart, decreases the heart rate. That would decrease the cardiac output, and that, of course, would decrease the blood pressure. And the parasympathetic nervous system also has a tone. There's a constant signal going to the heart from the parasympathetic nervous system as well. It's like driving with your brakes on. Imagine that. If you drove with your brakes on and you wanted to slow the car down, you could just push on the brake. And if you wanted to speed the car up, you could take your foot off the brake. So similarly, a decrease in the parasympathetic nervous system signal to the heart would increase the heart rate because you're taking your foot off the brakes and that would increase the cardiac output 
and that would increase the blood pressure. So cardiac action can be controlled by both the sympathetic nervous system signal to the heart and the parasympathetic nervous system signal to the heart. Now there's another factor that we need to look at so let's move down a little bit and let's talk about the peripheral resistance. Now the sympathetic nervous system sends a signal to blood vessels and an increase in the sympathetic nervous system signal causes the blood vessel to get smaller. We call that vasoconstriction. And that increases the resistance to flow. It's a lot harder to pull things through a small soda straw than a big one, isn't it? So that, that increases the peripheral resistance and that would increase the blood pressure. A decrease in the sympathetic nervous system signal to the blood vessel would lead to the opposite, that is, the blood vessel would get larger, and these vessels, by the way, are small arterioles for the most part. This is called vasodilation, and vasodilation decreases the peripheral resistance, which leads to a decrease in the blood pressure. Now, uh, one thing you need to be clear on, and that is that the parasympathetic nervous system does not go to blood vessels in order to supply resistance. And it doesn't go to the heart muscle either. That's a very frequent mistake that students make. It does not go to the blood vessels and it does not go to the heart muscle. So in order to increase the blood pressure, you would increase the sympathetic nervous system signal to the heart and to the blood vessels and you would decrease the parasympathetic nervous system signal and that only goes to the heart and to decrease the blood pressure you would do just the opposite. So that's a brief look at blood pressure control and uh, We'll have more to say on this in a future video. Thank you.